director of photography, Alec Watson. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how things as simple as just a crop and color temperature can really raise the bar on an image. And we're gonna do that in the develop suite. And these sound like simple things, but I thought I'd give you a kind of a twofer on this one. And we're just gonna show you how, how this can, simple things like this can really raise the bar on an image. I, I went into unsplash.com and I picked up some images of subject matter that I thought, you know what? If that were done slightly different, finished in a different way, like clearly someone looks like they edited this to me. That's a hard word to say. If someone clearly looked like they edited it. <laughs> I would edit in a different way. You get to choose which is better, but I'm gonna show you some things along the way. So from here, what I wanna do is I'm gonna take this into the develop suite. Now the develop suite has become much more powerful with AI. We're, no, we're not gonna jump right into AI. I wanna show you something really quickly before we get going too much on this. Now, if I change color temperature and exposure on this, I can click show original and we can see the difference. Now geometry is where we would go to do cropping and rotation. And I can rotate the image. And what we're gonna talk about why I would do that. If I click show original, it starts getting hard to see. If I crop the image and click show original, it gets really hard for me to show you what's going on. So I'm gonna show you something. I, I'll click reset the image in every way. There we go. I'm going to save a copy of this image and I'll call this image two. And the only reason I'm showing you, I'm gonna showing you this for two reasons. One is it's great to know how to do this. And the other is that it'll make it easier for me to do a comparison. So now I've got oops, two versions of this image. So I've got an original image. So we can do like an apples to apples comparison because when I click show original, which is like a handy thing to do, it's really hard to tell if I've actually made the image better. So I'm gonna go to this image two version and I'm gonna develop this. So that save a copy is super handy when you're making a bunch of changes. And even though we know the develop mode is non-destructive, that means it's, it's not going to make permanent changes to the image. It makes it difficult sometimes when you do have a bunch of editing uh, to, to undo it. And so this way I can have like two completely separate versions, which is just handy sometimes. So it's something I actually do and I thought I'd show you it. So here's our, here's our, our second version. I'm gonna take this white balance tool and just white balance our fog. Now, if I look up at the histogram, we can see that if, if this is pure white over here, we've got quite a ways till we get to pure white. And I would suggest for, for myself that in fog, I don't like heavy gray fog. I would suggest that fog actually gets pretty bright near the center. Not, and not a pure white, but certainly a paper white, which is gonna be more up there. So I'm, I'm heading this exposure. I've got it like half a stop up. I also think the image needs a little more contrast. Not so much on, on the, the foliage, but certainly on the bird. Now, I'm not gonna jump into AI on this one because I'm gonna do that in another video. I, I'm just suggesting that that is a change I would make. When I, when I, when I adjust the contrast to get the bird right, the the plants becoming, or the plant, the foliage is becoming a little heavy. I could probably pull in a little bit of fill light, but that's gonna kill that effect I want on our bird. I would actually get the bird with AI, which I said, we'll, we'll do it in a different one. What I really wanna show you on this is geometry. And the reason I wanna show you this is this happens in a lot of images. I have a really straight horizon here. This, uh, oops, did not mean to. I did not mean to do that. If, if I've got to reset something, which happens to all of us, I touch the screen and it's a touch screen, uh, reset on the crop. There we go, boom, crop reset. So this branch is cutting our image in half. It's not very, what I would call dynamic. I'm willing to bet that I could rotate this quite a ways there we go, that already feels better to me. So now just a simple rotation like that and we're not getting cut into top and bottom. And the bird does not feel like the bird is falling over. Now, as I rotate, one of the things that does happen is the image starts to crop tighter. And, and I thought this needed a tighter crop. The, the, 
the foliage is not doing much for me. And I find the bird fairly centered. Now in advertising, I can tell you there's a bunch of reasons. And, and, and compositionally, like when we think of rule of thirds, compositionally, we, we, like, we like points of interest hanging out on the thirds. And I can, I can tell you from the advertising world, one of the reasons for this is we like the viewer's eye to move through an image. When an image has a subject that's in the center, when we view the image, we, we can't see an entire image in one moment. We have to move our eyes around it. And uh, maybe one day I'll, I'll get into the science on that because that, that's, that's my jam and I get excited about that. But when we put a subject in the center, our eye focuses on the subject in the center and now we've seen everything. We didn't spend any time with the image. I mean, not only is that if you're in social media, bad for your algorithm, it, it's bad for the image in general because we want to take time to appreciate the image. And so when we put something in a third, it allows the eye to move around to make sure that we're not missing anything. If I'm doing a subject like a bird or a person, a dog, anything that's got a face that faces in some direction or has an action that's going in a direction, this bird facing this way would fly this way. The bird would fly up. I want to leave space for my imagination to let it go in those directions. So I'm putting, I'm choosing to put this bird in the bottom third. I could, I could, I could put the bird up here in this top third, but that wouldn't make sense to my imagination. It feels uncomfortable. The bird, <laughs> my imagination is going to fall off dead for some reason and, over, and keel over backwards and flop out of the photo. Not the vibe I am going for. I want the bird to fly free. There we go. And so I would tend to head in that direction. And that is just as, as simple as I would do on, on a crop for this image. So let's go ahead and I'm going to head back to manage mode. I'll save this one up. And then I'm going to take these two images. Oh, sorry, let, me, let me clear this back. Let me clear the, our, our friend, the image basket. There we go. I'm going to take both of these down to the image basket. And let's look at them side by each. Boom. And between the two images, there's the image that was unspla on Unsplash for me, really dark. The bird's in the center, it's got nowhere to go. Uh, it's blending in with the, the leaves and, and maybe that's their idea, but I don't even really see a bird. And like I said, I didn't use AI to do anything. All I did was choose my crop better and gave the bird somewhere to go. And we can already see that this image is about a bird and I, you know, this image over here has a bird in it. There you go, storytelling. I'm always thinking about the narrative of my photos. What is the photo about? How can I make it about that? And that's what I build the crop around. In the next video, we're gonna raise the bar even more. We're gonna use AI to get more image separation, more clarity. AI is, is our super tool and it can really raise the bar on our images. So join me there. Let's make our images great. Yeah.